Good morning, everybody. It is your daily crypto news for Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. And my name is Matt, and you can email me at matt at dailycryptonews.net. And if you are listening to this on any app that allows you to click five stars or leave a comment, please do. Let's get into it. Yesterday, I was talking about WorldCoin, and WorldCoin has been boasting about the numbers that they've been putting in because they reached 200,000 people scanning their irises to put it into a blockchain in Chile. They reached 350,000 people that chose, in air quotes, chose to put their irises and scan on the blockchain in Kenya. And if you notice, these two countries are emerging economies, basically lower income economies individuals are putting their irises putting their data scanning their irises into the blockchain to try to take advantage of some sort of monetary reward and this monetary reward as we saw yesterday for an income an average income of something like 560 dollars in chile somebody who scanned their irises could be making around 150 extra dollars which is around let's just call it 30 percent of their income that is huge so i just want to ask what kind of choice do they have and are they taking advantage of poor people? So at To Be Inspired wrote on a comment on YouTube and said, yes, I do believe that they're taking advantage of poor people, but the people are willing to pay the price. They aren't being forced to do it, which would be totally a different situation. And I want to say 100%, if you're being forced to scan your irises into an orb, then yeah, it's different. But I want to talk about the spectrum of choice. How much choice do they really have? And I think that we have to actually acknowledge that choice is a spectrum and that we have luxuries and privileges of choice. The choice of actual physical choice of goods and the choice of belief. Like, for example, myself, I eat organic. I eat small farm. I have the choice to try to find an organic small farm that's locally grown so I could buy the locally grown produce from them. And if that doesn't work, I can go to Whole Foods or my local store over here, Heinz, and buy organic there. And I stay away from something like uh, Costco organic. Why? Because it is an industrial mass produced organic, which is, I think, different than a small farm organic. That is a massive privilege that I have that I'm able to pick where I buy my apples and bananas and cucumbers or whatever the hell else I'm buying. While some people don't even have access to fresh fruits and vegetables and produce because they live in a food desert because of where they live. That is a huge difference in choice that I have. I mean, we could talk about choice of beliefs as well, because a choice of a belief is like, let's talk about climate change. We're over here where we have the privilege to research and look at and watch news about and think about climate change in a suburb of Northeast Ohio, where you have, you know, big yards and two cars and big houses and so on and so forth. But I lived in Indonesia and they ride scooters by the thousands into working on the roads and whatever. And I promise if you asked any of them about climate change and fossil fuels and using gasoline for your for your scooters, I don't think anybody's going to one care and two want you to take away their scooters and their use of fossil fuels for their lifestyles because they don't really have another choice. They can't afford another choice, but we're privileged to start thinking about maybe I'll buy an EV. Maybe I'll get solar on my on my house. Maybe I'll get some backup batteries. That is a privilege. So I want to make sure that we're having the conversation that even though that it is their choice, there is a spectrum of choice. And that spectrum of choice, if they're offering you one third of your salary to scan your irises, which is only 150 bucks, I would never take that money to scan my irises into some damn orb for 150 bucks. But would I do it for, let's say if I made $100,000 a year, would I do it for 30? Would you do it for 30,000? Would you do it for 300,000? And so the spectrum of choice, depending on where you are and who you are, is vastly different. And sometimes that spectrum of choice is so narrow that it actually isn't a choice at all. Anyway, thank you for writing in. Let's get into actual crypto news. A group of investors behind a class action lawsuit against Terraform Labs and its co-founder Do Kwan has dropped the case. They didn't explicitly state why they dropped the case, but they dropped it without prejudice. They were suing over fraud allegations. But if you're sitting here saying like, oh man, they dropped the case, don't worry, don't worry. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission still has a civil suit out against Do Kwan and Terra Luna for allegedly orchestrating a multi-billion dollar crypto asset security fraud. It's odd that they dropped the suit. What do you think? Don't worry though, don't worry. Where one class action lawsuit goes, one comes in. A class action lawsuit was filed against Binance.us and Binance's CEO, Chung Peng Zhao, or CZ, on October 2nd. And this was filed in the District Court of Northern California. 
This lawsuit is alleging various violations of federal and California law under unfair competition for attempting to monopolize the cryptocurrency market by harming its competitor, FTX. Okay, well, I know it's not the Fed doing this lawsuit. However, I do find it interesting that people are suing for a monopoly of an industry that they're actively trying to destroy. I think it's kind of interesting. I'll continue. The issue around this lawsuit are posts made by Zhao on Twitter, now X, in early November. On the eve of FTX's collapse, the posts were made in conjunction with the decision by the defendants to liquidate their holdings of FTX utility token, FTT, on November 6. The plaintiffs estimated that Binance owned up to 5% of all FTT tokens. The following day, CZ stated on a Twitter post that Binance had signed a letter of intent to acquire FTX, but it backed out of that one day later. They said in this lawsuit that CZ publicly disseminated this information on the withdrawal of the acquisition offer and other social media platforms to hurt FTX entities that ultimately led to the rushed and unprecedented collapse of FTX entities. I do want to underscore one word there, and that's rushed. Ultimately led to the rushed collapse of FTX entities. And by saying rushed, it's saying that it was inevitable, right? But it was kind of expedited. So this was going to happen. It's, this is what it looks like. This is what it reads to me. So I wouldn't have used the word rushed <laughs> because it's saying that this is inevitable. And ultimately, even though it was rushed, maybe it was inevitable because he was using customers funds to pay himself to put names of FTX on billboards and stadiums and branding for the MLB. Oh, and hundreds of millions of dollars into political campaigns. Crypto legend John McAfee's suicide confirmed by the Spanish courts. And this is around three years after his death. If we want to remember, back in October 15th of 2020, John McAfee tweeted, I am content here. I have friends. The food is good. All is well. Know that if I hang myself, a la Epstein, it would be no fault of mine. And he tweeted that from jail in Spain, John McAfee did not kill himself. Several Ethereum futures exchange traded funds, or ETFs, have started trading in the United States for the first time. Investment firms ProShares, Van Eck, Bitwise, Valkyrie, Kelly, and VolShares collectively debuted a total of nine ETFs on the Chicago Board Options Exchange. However, these nine funds got off to a slow start. They had traded a little under $2 million in total. Here's the facts. Nobody wants futures. Everybody wants spot ETFs, but we're not getting it. As we know, the trial of Sam Bankman Freed is starting today, and that's going to be a zoo. Even the New York Times daily podcast called The Daily did a whole episode on the Sam Bankman Freed trial. I'm going to listen to it, even though I'm already sick of this. Remember, he is part of one of the biggest frauds in global history. But that's not the news I want to talk about today. The former CEO of FTX, Sam Bankman Freed, reportedly mauled offering Donald Trump $5 billion to dissuade him from running for office again in 2024. And this is according to Michael Lewis. And Michael Lewis is the author of The Big Short and this new book about SBF, Going Infinite, The Rise and Fall of a New Tycoon. Michael Lewis said that if this shocks you that Sam tried to offer Donald Trump $5 billion, then you don't know Sam. Sam's thinking is we could pay Donald Trump not to run for president. Like, how much could it take? So why didn't it happen? Why didn't he pay Donald Trump not to run for president? Well, he didn't have $500 anymore. I don't know if you guys were paying attention, but FTX collapsed and he's in jail and he's going to trial today. These AI-generated deep fakes are getting out of control. Apparently, there's a deep fake of actor Tom Hanks endorsing a dental plan. And Hanks says this isn't him. There's other deep fakes running around. I guess Zelda Williams is the daughter of Robin Williams, you know, the actor comedian. There's a fake of her going around. There's a fake of Mr. Beast going around, saying that he's going to give away iPhones, 10,000 of them, iPhone 15 Pros. So these deep fakes are getting out of control. Again, this is just part of the development of technology. You got to figure out how to deal with this. I say don't regulate. We have to find systems to make sure that we can figure out who is who, what is what, what is real and what is not. But I think this is actually a pretty cool attack. What do you think? Stop it now or let it develop? Matt at dailycryptonews.net. And finally, crypto forensics firms Chainalysis announced a significant reduction to its workforce. 
a reduction of 15% or 135 employees. A spokesperson for Chainalysis told Decrypt, This week, we announced that we made the difficult decision to part ways with 15% of our employees. I, I, I love that. Part ways. You fired them. Come on. They continue to say, We are focused on growing efficiently and, due to market conditions, we believe that it's necessary to reduce our expenses at this time. We remain committed to our mission to build trust in blockchains among government agencies, financial institutions, and cryptocurrency businesses. If you guys remember, earlier this year, we reported that they also reduced their staff by 5% in February. As of today, 70% of the firm's revenue is generated from the public sector. Now, let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. And the time is 9.19 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are at 44 neutral, which is down a little bit from yesterday. Yesterday it was 44, so we're sliding a little more fearful. And that's probably because Bitcoin is sitting at $27,504, down 2.8% in 24. While Ethereum is at $1,656, down 4.2%. Yikes. Tell us number three, Binance is at 213, down 2.6%. And XRP is at 50.8 cents, down 2.6%. Running up the top 10, we have USDC, Solana, Cardano, Doge, and Tron is back in the top 10. Huh. The total market cap is at 1.09 trillion, down almost 3%. We have a Bitcoin dominance of 49.4 and an ETH dominance of 18.3. And that was our show today. I hope you had a great day. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, we just launched our first foreign language daily crypto news. We have daily crypto news in Korean. I, I doubt if you're listening to this, you're going to pop over to daily crypto news in Korea. Uh, I just want to let you know. And soon we're going to launch in Spanish as well. Stay tuned to that. Anyway, until tomorrow, happy hodling, everyone.